We are learning that the CIA director went to Kyiv for this meeting that no one knew about with President Zelensky, and a lot of that was to talk about the possibility of offensives this spring. Yeah, John, this is something that the U.S. is very concerned about and is watching very closely, not least because the Ukrainians, as Clarissa said, have been sounding the alarm on a potential major Russian offensive in the works because not all of its troops that have been mobilized have actually gone to Ukraine yet. So they still have people in reserve who would be able to potentially launch a new offensive against Ukraine. And so what we are learning is that the CIA director, Bill Burns, who really has emerged as kind of a key uh, emissary here between the U.S., Ukraine and even Russia, went to Ukraine to brief President Zelensky on the U.S. assessment of where Russia might strike next. Now, Russia, of course, they have been kind of on the defensive in certain areas of Ukraine, including in the Donbass, with the exception, of course, of Bakhmut, where a lot of heavy fighting has been happening. But what the U.S. seems to believe now is that Russia is, in fact, preparing for a potential major offensive. And they want President Zelensky, of course, to be ready for that and to have all of the information that he needs, including, of course, key intelligence to be able to uh, position troops and be able to fight that back. Now, uh, it remains to be seen whether or not Russia is going to be doing another major uh, mobilization. That is something the Ukrainians have also been warning about. Right now, the U.S. seems to be a little bit more reluctant about whether that can actually happen. But the bottom line here is that the U.S. and the Ukrainians are sounding the alarm about a potential uh, major Russian attack here. Yeah, and what's so significant about that was that it was just about a year ago that the CIA director Burns also had informed Ukrainians of U.S. intelligence showing mm -hmm. that Russia would, in fact, invade. Ukraine at the time said that their intelligence didn't match that. Clearly, they are taking what they hear from Burns this time around very seriously. The U.S. Defense Secretary is taking part at the Ramstein Air Base in Germany right now, and Ukraine says the gathering could decide the fate of the war. Dozens of defence leaders from around the world are discussing whether to provide Kyiv with heavy weapons. Germany is under mounting pressure to send its Leopard 2 tanks to the Ukrainian battlefield or at least allow them to be transferred from other countries that have them. President Zelensky made an impassioned plea via video link urging Western allies to send their weapons without delay. The war started by Russia does not allow delays. And I, and I can thank you hundreds of times and it will be absolutely just and fair, given all that we have already done. But, but hundreds of thank you are not hundreds of tanks. Uh, Nara Basha uh, joins us. So a huge amount of pressure on Germany because Ukraine needs tanks. But at the same time, the US could give them tanks, but isn't. Why is that? Well, the U.S. has laid out an expansive deal of support, $2.5 million worth. They say that they have chosen not to supply those M1 Abrams, which Ukraine has been asking for, because they simply wouldn't suit the situation on the ground for Ukraine. They are too complicated to run, too complicated to maintain, and the logistical challenges there are also complex. But they aren't saying that they are... Uh, not in favour of tank support from the European partners. In fact, the US is fully in support of that and has been working with its other NATO and European allies, urging Germany uh, in particular to support Ukraine through the supply of those Leopard 2 tanks. Because they make them and the deal is when they sell them to another country, they can't be passed on without Germany's permission. So there's all of these Leopard tanks across Europe which Germany effectively has the key to. Well, exactly, and Germany holds the export licence, and that is something that Poland has been keen to highlight. They say they are ready and prepared to supply those tanks from Poland uh, to Ukraine, but they are waiting on the green light from Germany, and that's why there's so much international pressure now uh, on the German government to do so. We've heard uh, from Scholz saying that, Chancellor Scholz saying that, you know, Germany stands side by side in its support with its international partners for Ukraine, but at this stage they haven't outlined whether or not they will be offering those tanks uh, as support. Of course, there is questions around whether or not they are still waiting for perhaps the United States uh, to offer a firm uh, offer of uh, tanks. They say they might go ahead with that if there was a similar offer from the United States. That hasn't happened, but of course, this meeting today is all very much focused uh, on the supply of tanks. We've heard from Ukraine's defence uh, minister, Alexei Raznikov. He's present at that meeting, but he outlined the three mm. key things that Ukraine wants to achieve at this meeting on Twitter. He said they want more air defence systems. They want a uh, securing ammo supplies as well as repair and servicing support for machinery. But crucially, that third key thing they need is tanks, more modern tanks. And this is based on, just briefly, um, the feeling uh, that there will be a spring offensive and it will be on the ground and they'll need tanks to 
defend themselves, but also to push forward on the Russian line. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've heard from the international partners, from NATO, the US, European partners, saying they are ready to stand by Ukraine when it comes to the defensive support. The question now is how far are they prepared to go to support Ukraine when it comes to the offensive support that they so desperately yeah. want? OK, Nada, thank you very much indeed.